How do I put this lightly? We had an insane money-making day inside Team Bull Trading, and now I want to share the value and education with you. What's going on, my friends? It's your boy, Jada on Trades with Team Bull Trading, and I hope you're all having an amazing day. In this video, I'm going to teach you exactly what the title says, how to trade SPY and how to find your levels, but not in a traditional sense. Many people try to teach, but it's all hindsight. It's all a basic slideshow of things they didn't actually do. I'm gonna show you real trades that we took before they happened in real time, which leads us to number one. Show a real-time trade we took today inside of Team Bull and how we applied what I will teach you. Number two, I wanna show you the time zones, the three golden time frames that you need to know to trade SPY, what I use every day, what allowed me to make almost $25,000 so far this week. Mind you, it is Wednesday. And number three, the most common mistake people make. Now there's a few in there, it's not one, it's a multitude. I've taught thousands of students. I've kind of gathered what people do right, what they do wrong, and now I want to share it with you. So as always, my friends, I teach for free every single day on this channel and on our other main channel at Team Bull Trading, we have a free podcast, a free course that is organized step-by-step -step for you and so much more other solid free education. So if you like making money, if you enjoy transparent trading, and if you get some value from this video, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button in the bottom right corner. Comment what you wanna learn next below and let's get to the money and education together. Now for this video slash tutorial, we're gonna start off on the charts. We're gonna go over some setups that we took today, some levels that we plotted, how I found my watch list. And then afterwards, we are gonna make our way back to the slideshow. So make sure you stick around for that. There's gonna be a lot of education in there as well. Now, starting off the day, this was my watch list. I had my game plan for the day that I gave inside Team Bull. I was watching for a SPY 408 to 408.3 area reject for puts and a 405 to 406 area for a bounce. I also had a few individual names on watch, but I only ended up trading SPY. Now, if we go back to the charts, we can see the very bottom of the day for this first half was this 405 to a T. This was the trade that I traded live inside Team Bull on voice. And then we came up, almost touched this 408, 407.8 as a top before coming tumbling down. Now, who cares about what we did? The only reason I show you that is transparency, showing you, yes, we do know what we're talking about, and now I wanna teach you the why. So, going back to our golden zones, or I guess I should say our golden timeframes. There are three that I use religiously in finding levels. First and foremost, the daily chart. You need to know where we are on the macro on the daily, so you know the trend. You know any big supports or resistances. You need to know what that is looking like. The majority of market participants are looking at the bigger pictures, so if you have a big resistance, or a big support or a big area that you need to know about, you can't know about it without knowing where the daily is. Now, after you've diagnosed the daily, we wanna then go over to the four hour chart. Super, super, super important. Now the four hour gives us a nice, a little smaller view than the daily, gives us a little more smaller picture, however, with that macro feel. So after the daily every single day, like I did today and it helped out, paid us big time, I went over to the four hour. Now after looking at those two, I've looked at the daily, I've looked at the four hour, I can cross both those off my morning, you know, my morning list. I then go over to bum bada bum, the hourly, the king of all time frames, in my opinion. I love the hourly chart. It's gonna give you so much confluence, show you your levels, and do so much more positive things for your trading. So now that we have the three golden time frames, I want to go back to the chart, show you how we use them, and then we'll come back to the slideshow to go over the biggest mistake traders make when trading spot. So starting off the day, the first thing I'm doing is looking at pre-market. So we go here, we get a big sell off yesterday. Little movement back and forth here. Now it's important to note as well, pre-market two, Microsoft, big move up, Google, big move up. We always, or I guess not big move, excuse me, big move up in the morning, move down-ish, flat, pre-market, big move up in the morning. Now we know that we have to watch the big tech names, the big blue chip names. Now we go here, I wanna to go to SPY and we're gonna go over how we used our levels and broke it down to find our entries today. So we start off with the daily chart and look at this. We wanna see, okay, do we have any key levels of support, resistance, supply and demand that we need to know about? So we look at this and I break it down. I'm like, okay, we've had a sell off the last few days. You know, we've, we had this high of 415, 416, came down, we're heading on back down. So what is a level that we've touched multiple times and bounced? This 406. However, we not only had that, we go a step further down. What is a big area of confluence that we had before, right? We had touched us up and down here in the daily. We had a big reversal here. This was the bottom point. We had this big move up before establishing the support. This 406 to 405 was an overall huge level for us. 
huge level in here that had to be respected. And I was like, okay, looks decent. Let's see how it looks on the four hour chart. Go over to the four hour, looking at this. Clearly tell, 406 area to 405, a lot of confluence in here, a lot of up and down movement. We just go to this 406 in general right here, a lot of up and down movement right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. A ton of touches right here. Over and over again, that was a lot of right here. I felt like I was a jukebox that was like paused, or like one of the CDs that was paused. Anywho, we had a lot of confluence down here. So for me, it was worth a try to try a bounce down there. Your risk reward is there, okay? So then we have our final contender in here, the hourly chart. This is my favorite. We go here, see the same thing. All these touches down here. This touch down here at 406 yesterday. So between all of those different things confirming this, the risk reward is there, we're gonna try it. Now on the flip side, where did I get that 408 area? Why was I willing to take that 408? Let's go through the same process again. We're looking pre-market. 408, we had some touches up there. We had some down touch here, up touch here. Some, you know, some median up. Didn't really respect it in here, but two down touches here. So for me, it's worth it, you know, worth looking the daily. Go to the four hour chart here. Let's go look at this. 408, had a few more touches on here, right? Little confluence here, like 407.4, decent. And overall, some consolidation here after a big move down that could potentially act as a, as a resistance on the way back up. Let's go to the hourly chart here. Run it back, baby. Again, same thing we see here. These touches down here, these touches down here. So between all of the confluence, you know, all of the levels lining up, that was where I found my risk reward for myself. Now, looking at this on the five minute chart. Now, I didn't put this in the golden time frames because this is what I use to day trade. I don't use this to find levels. I use the five minute to execute, right? We came back down, and this was a trade we took live at Team Bull. Grizz started his position a tad early. He started at 406, which is okay because his main, main ad area was this 405. Now, I want to talk about this in the biggest mistakes people make, so we're going to touch on this again. But if you're watching 406 to 405, great lesson here. Great lesson here. And you want to start just in case, let's say we would have bounced at 406 and went up. You want to start your position early, very lightly. So basically, if you want your main area to be 405, which is what I waited for, called the Century Out Live. But, you know, you want to try something earlier, you have to do it extremely lightly and accept that risk. You have to accept that dollar risk, which is probably going to plummet your contracts. A dollar move on SPY is... It's not great for, for calls. Let's just say that to the downside. So you start your position lightly. You add more if that's in your plan beforehand at your main level. And if you did that, this trade worked out very nicely. For me personally, I didn't like this price action right here. I waited, I waited, I waited. Took it right here. These contracts move beautifully from six, 66 cents all the way to a dollar plus in this small move up right here. Now, on this, if we would have kept sinking, my stop loss on this, likely around this 404.7 to 404.6, give myself 30, 40 cents a room for hopefully 80 cents to a dollar move up, right? I want at least two to one, ideally three to one risk reward, and that's what we look for. Now, with that, you know, I think there's a really good lesson in adding early, you know, and how to position size yourself and all the above. I talk to people about this in Team Bull every single day, and again, I always like to say, don't listen to me, right? Don't listen to what I'm saying. We go over here to our results. Team Bull, thanks for the education and motivation. My man made 230 bucks today, best in the league. Thanks to the boys on live trading this morning, plus 672. The list goes on. First day here, coming in strong, plus $3,000 this the first day. And guess what? We can keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, baby. We rolling, 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 scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Thanks for education and mentorship. You got it, Miss Man. Come on. So what I'm trying to say is what we teach works if you buy into it. You got to buy into yourself. We don't have some secret strategy. There's not some, you know, secret potion we're giving. It's price action, grind, levels, and what I'm about to teach you next in the next slides. Now, as someone who has taught thousands of students, helped thousands become profitable, I've seen the biggest mistake people make. I've seen a lot of mistakes. Every one in the book, and I have made all those mistakes myself. Hence why I was able to overcome them, work on them, practice over and over for years, and eventually help others learn too. What are those mistakes? Here is a few I want to elaborate on. Not staying patient for their levels. I see people wanting to jump the gun. They don't want to wait. Why? Likely because they're not looking to trade. They're looking for a hit of dopamine. They want to have fun. They want to feel something. So you want to trade, trade, trade. This is a game of snipers. This is not a game of being a machine gunner. Okay, your job is to be a sniper. You want to be Chris Kyle. Okay, you wait. You have your one bullet. You hold, you hold, you hold. When your shot comes, you take it. Stop being impatient for your levels. Discipline over dopamine. Sizing and wrong. You want to post big gains on your Instagram. 
you know, on your Snapchat. You want to send them to your mom, whatever it is, right? You want to have that self, you know, fulfilling of, oh, I had a $300, $500 day when your biggest so far, when your position size merits $100. Stop oversizing. You've got to stop oversizing, my friends. If you want to make it in trading, you got to trade that emotion that comes with lower size and earning your position size. Trading too far out the money. Cheap does not equal good, fam. Cheap does not equal good. I personally like to trade one to three spots out of the money, three at most, at the money, whatever you want to call it, right there at it where there's liquidity, right? Your delta's up, you'll move more, and you have more potential to go in the money and get that, you know, get that premium increase. So out the money contracts too far does not equal good, typically low liquidity, not enough movement, and will expire worthless. And then not allowing the trade to breathe. This kind of goes hand in hand with sizing and wrong. If you get in too big and your, you know, your trade moves a few cents, you're going to freak out because you're going to be down a ton, right? You need to be able to size lower and let your trade breathe. Let it work. Okay, not every trade is going to be green right off the rip. Those calls and voice today were awesome. Right off the rip, green. You know, those puts and voice yesterday were awesome. Awesome. Right off the rip, green. But it's not always going to be like that, right? You got to size into a lot your trade to breathe, allow your stop loss to work for you if it ends up hitting, you know, sometimes it happens, and allow your take profit to work for you if and when, hopefully, it's more often than not it goes up. Allow the trade to breathe, follow these steps, and let yourself and your principal work for you and produce your profits. So with all that said, I love seeing you guys learn. I love teaching you guys. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, tap in for more daily free videos, and make sure you guys are watching the podcast. I got a fire episode for you coming out this weekend. Got a new one every single weekend or another different longer form education video for you right here on YouTube. God bless. I will see you guys next time. Peace.